Welcome guys, it's Max Clausen, and now it's been a while with all the duel videos you've seen, but all the duels and stuff have been in preparation of getting better hell holds on my deck, so we're bringing you a updated new version to play you bell. And one of my commenters actually made a hint about it in one of my previous duel videos, and that is going to be you bell kaiju. Now the whole premise of this deck is still the whole, you know, you bell damage reflection OTK on the second turn or so, second, third turn, whatever turn it may be. And controlling the board is to a select, not really controlling the board, but making sure your you bell monsters stick and you can do over 8,000 points of damage in, during your first turn. So without further ado, we're going to be going into the main and extra deck. If you want to check out the side, it'll be on my Patreon, which you guys should actually go check out as I'm trying to get those, get that rolling, get, you know, a little more income so I can get videos and cards out for you, their profiles out for you guys faster. And apologies for my voice, you know, spring is finally here and pollen's in the air, so that's a thing. Also, before we start, I finally managed to pick up while I was at my locals. Yes, sir, the Fubel Field Center. I am now official. So, let's start up the profile. We're going to be starting with the original Ubel Terror Incarnate and Ubel. The spell and trap cards all work around this and really hyped about Legacy of Destruction coming out pretty soon. So, be on the lookout for another update to that. But, as it all self explanatory, a lot of U Bell profiles will have a have the similar ratio of running only these two. You can run Ultimate Nightmare if you'd like to, but with the current stuff we do have, you know, you always seeing Terra and Connor is already a brick, so you don't wanna constantly see bricky cards in your hand. Next up is your real ace card, Spirit of U Bell. When your opponent declares an attack, whether it be if you control a monster or not, you can activate it from your hand to special summon it. And upon being summoned, special summon, it can add or set to your field one spell or trap card that specifically mentions you bell. So even if your opponent does draw you, this gets around draw. So there's no real point of that. And should it be destroyed, it like the original you bell, it'll summon out you bell from your hand, deck, grave, or banishment. So Getting hit with D-Shifter also does not affect this deck too much whatsoever. Next up for all you bell profiles at this point and going forward, I do I do still like the idea that we all collectively are running Grice Grinder Golem. As a going second-ish deck, this deck does want to make sure they have a monster that they can reliably attack into without having to worry about much of anything. Also, it is a time card in itself because when it attacks a U-Bell monster, the opponent, i.e. you, the U-Bell player, gains 3,000 life points. So the way you would summon this is that you can reveal it and a U-Bell monster from your hand, special summon itself, and then you can summon the U-Bell monster you revealed. Or, if it's in the graveyard, if you summon U-Bell, it can summon itself to your opponent's field pretty fr easily. Next up is 3 Sem Sara D Lotus. Obviously, you want to maximize on seeing this because this is your starter. That's how you get your plays going. Your opponent, if they know what to do, they will always Veiler or Imperm. But if this is your normal summon, they kind of wasted it because then you can just go into Al Mirage and then use your continuous spell to summon Sem Sara back. And while it's on the field, if, well, if it's in a graveyard, the end phase, you control a U-Bell, the original. It can summon itself back to the field or add itself back to your hand. And during your opponent's turn, should, well, should they activate a monster's effect, you can tribute this card, make that effect become your opponent destroys a U-Bell monster on your field. So it can literally interrupt your opponent's most important card, should they have one card in hand or what so have you. Next up for the spells, we have the three Super Poly, obviously because U Bell synergizes with it. We have the three Nightmare Pain. 
your second most important card you want to maximize on seeing this card in my personal opinion nightmare pain has two three effects so so the first effect is that you can destroy a dark monster from your field or fate or in your hand and at, if you do you can add one card that specifically mentions you bell so the whole strategy would be to destroy spirit search out your eternal favorite then spirits effect will summon out you bell the and then you the snowball rolls from there the next effect it has is that your opponent while this card is face up on the field your opponent must attack you bell monsters that are if they have anything in face up attack position they must attack you bell if they are able to and they take the damage when you would take the damage with battles involving you bell monsters so you can use spirit you bell or terror incarnate just attack into them and forewarning well not forewarning but a little tip that it does not really help you guys the opponents to like imperm these cards like people have done that so many times and i'm just like Okay, attack, crash, effect, summon, attack. You just don't, just don't do it. Like, only thing you're doing is wasting an interruption card. But hey, if you, got, if you felt threatened, you felt threatened. Next up is the one for one, because let's get, get to your Samsung Alola, so it's a honorary U-Bell card. And la last up for the U-Bell support stuff, we do have the one eternal favorite. Choosing to run the one because running two, you can do so. Have one to summon a Ubel and then the other one a Super Poly. But having this alone by itself doesn't do much unless you have one of these somewhere banished or in the graveyard. And it, and you can't even Super Poly unless you have the original Ubel on the field. And yes, I know I misplayed with that so many times in my earlier duel videos but again i was still learning the deck like it has been a little while but you know getting used to these things does take time so don't start pitch fires or whatever have you so yeah you have to control the original ubel to use the super poly effect but that's why we do run just the three regular super poly because they can't respond to this they can respond to this Next up, we do play the three Dark Beckoning Beast. It's just a very good, still just very, very helpful for this deck. I'm getting you an additional normal summon, which would be Samsara or another copy of itself. And, set, and Beckoning Beast would go with the two opening of the Spirit Gate. On activation, this will search out this. And on normal summon, this will... Uh, we'll search out this or summon or whatever just summon in general they some they search out each other so pre discard fodder pre summoning fodder this card as you see in other other videos but if you have it while you control a level 10 monster you can add a continuous spell back from your graveyard to your hand so you can add another copy of itself that happened to get popped or add nightmare pain back and its other effect is you can discard a card for cost and then summon a monster with zero attack a fiend with zero attack and defense from your graveyard back to your back to your field. So any of these things except Grice Grinder Golem, obviously. Next up we do have the Unchained package being red and blue. Still very helpful. <clears throat> yes, they are still it is still sucky when you draw the one of being the abominable chain chamber but you know if you do draw this then you just search off blue dog pitch blue dog with this card to summon out one of these use set this use blue dog's effect to destroy a card you control to summon it back from the graveyard and this effect will get this out and there's your rank six play so yeah that's blue dog's effect while it's on the field, it's a walking twin twister of sorts, pop it, or double cycle more correctly, popping one of your spell and traps or one of theirs. And red dog, when it leaves the field, it can set an unchanged spell or trap. And you can target a fiend or a set card you control as the as the cost or well, condition. Yeah, the condition is to already just target one of those such things. So if you have this or anything else. 
you can target it to summon it and then you can still chain said card as it came up in one of my old dual videos if you've seen that summon it to the field and then when it hits the graveyard switch out this that is it for all the fiend based cards now we are going in to the kaiju inside we're running three Jishikiru, three Radian, and three Gandala, along with obviously the three Interrupted Kaiju Slumber. Now, my whole reasoning for playing this engine, I mean, come on guys, no one really expects or respects Kaijus much anymore. But being able to get rid of an opponent's problematic monster, like say I'm fighting Voices Voice, they have Low, they have the Swordsman, whatever his name is, just one of them. Alright, draw for turn. Here you go, get rid of that ritual. So not only do they lose their Omni Negate, they also lose their Interruption with the Trap card. Because they have to control a Ritual Warrior or Dragon Monster, which they now do not have. And the same goes for like Snake Eyes, should they have like a certain monster on the field that they want to keep to like use for Fire Princess, you can just tribute over it and then do all that you want. So it's pretty good. I do think the Kaijus are a very interesting idea and if you want to try it, you can. Next up for the last bit of cards, we have the two tech talents and the one call by just to stop an opponent from hitting us with an ash or a veiler or some what have you. So for the main deck, connect now we'll move on to the extra deck. I do have a new upgrade which I finally reobtained. We still run the Mud Dragon, the Garuga. The new addition that I'm finally glad to have back. The Earth Golem Attic Mister, yes baby! Finally got this card back, managed to get it pretty fairly at the locals, and it did come up one time, and it was, you know, it's just here to get rid of stuff when you're fighting Fire Kings, pretty much, or Snake Eyes rather. Next we have the Draco Stapelia, and the one Draco Equest. Just in case we go up against a Centurion player, you want to have options. Next, we do run the two Loving Defender Forever. Uh, when we get the new support, you'll run one or two of it, depending on how well, well, how the meta changes up and such. But that's way when we get uh, Phantom Ubel. Now for the XCs, the Wave King Kaiser. The Gustav Max. And then for the Lynx, we have the Almirage, the One McCraker, the SP Little Knight, the Soul of Rage, the Dark, and the One Yama. Honestly, I would run two Yamas if I had it, and I would probably take out uh, Draco Equest if anything, because Yama is so, so, so helpful for this in this deck. It's not even funny. But yeah, that is going to be it for the Ubel Kaiju deck profile. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And again, apologize for how I sound and stuff. Again, pollen in the air, springtime is finally here. So, allergies and whatnot have you, sniffles and all that stuff. But I wanted to get this profile out to you guys. And we will have some more deck profiles coming up soon. Again, if you want to see the side deck, it will be in my Patreon, which you guys should go check out. I'm trying to really get that up and going. And I highly encourage, like, chatting there, like, asking questions, how, like, what you would run instead, or what you guys would add or what take out and all that. But without further ado, thank you guys for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.